Hello, this is Dr. Dan Baker here at Colorado State University with some common free body diagram errors that I often will observe in teaching my CIVE 260 Engineering Mechanics Statics course. Let's jump into these errors. First of all, I see students adding weight when it's not included in the problem. So only include weight on a free body diagram if the problem mentions the weight of a body, whether it mentions it or says it has an unknown weight or whatever else, but it mentions it in any way, include the weight. If it doesn't mention it, we ignore it. We basically assume that it's massless. Second, one of the common errors I see is, is not isolating the correct body given in the problem statement. So on this one here, we have a problem statement that says find the reactions at A, B, and C, noting it doesn't say anything here about D. So this is the body that would basically enable us to find the reactions here at A, at B, and at C. It doesn't include point D, right? Point D over here is not going to be included. We're just going to include basically the forces coming from these three supports. And we'll talk about the supports here in the next slide. So next up is not removing the supports from your free body diagram. Here at point A, we have a smooth rod with a collar on the smooth rod, which is pinned to body A, B, C. This gives us a normal force. This normal force will be perpendicular to the smooth rod. Basically, no force allowed along here, no support force, only perpendicular. So that would give us a force basically going up in this direction up here. So we could call this, uh, if we wanted to, the normal force at point A, right? Perpendicular, 45 degree angle from the smooth rod. The second one that we have is going to be the force here at B. And so at B, we have a normal force coming straight up. This is a rocker. So this rocker would allow motion left and right, only a normal force here. And so this would be our normal force coming from B. Now notice in neither one of these cases did I include the collar or the rod over here at A, nor the rocker at B. Okay, we've represented those supports by a force. Okay, so here in the problem statement, is basically here's the drawing portion of it. Here is the force portion of that, doing the same thing up here at C. At C, I have a pinned member, pinned on both ends, no mass, no weight mentioned whatsoever. That should cue in your brain that this is a two-force member. So with this two-force member, uh, if we assume that it is in tension, it tension always pulls, and so tension will be pulling here away from point C, and I could call this either normal or tension or just C or whatever I want to call it, but I'll call that the tension of C, assuming a two-force member. Once again, I did not include the member CD, nor did I include the pin over here at D, none of that. I included my isolated body, ABC, these three support forces, NA, NB, and TC, and never forget to add your forces, your external forces that are applied. So we have here this 2.5 kilonewton force. And then we also have a couple down here at B. This couple is in the negative right-hand rule direction and has a magnitude there of four kilonewton meters. My apologies with this uh, pen setup I'm using today, not the greatest of writing, but uh, hopefully you can read all that. So here is our free body diagram. All support forces, the three of them, also our external force and our external couple. Next, another error that I see is adding internal forces when they can be ignored. And so we could look at two different questions on this uh, exact same drawing. One of those would be to find the normal forces at A and B. Another one is to find the components of the reactions here at the pin at C and also at the pin at D. Two very different questions that require very different free body diagrams. Let me sketch those out. I'll start with the top one here, find the normal forces at A and B. So in order to find the normal forces at A and B, the top one here that we're gonna work on, I need to basically draw a free body diagram of this entire crane, adding in those normal forces here at A and B. And so that would look like this. Now keep in mind that our free body, free body diagrams don't have to be perfect. There's the crane arm coming up, coming down. Here's that lower leg. Uh, there's gonna be a wheel down there and a wheel in the back. So there is my overall blob of a free body diagram. Now I can come up and add my um, body forces. One of those body forces will be a vertical force coming out here, the weight of that drum. So we call this weight one. Additionally, we'd have a centroidal weight of this crane given in the problem. We can call that W2. 
two, and then we would add basically our normal forces, right? If we isolated this body, this crane, away from the surface that it's sitting on, then I add in the two normal forces, one back here, this would be N sub A, and then another one over here on wheel B, this would be N sub A. B. So noting on this example, I did not include any of the internal forces at C or at D or at E or anywhere else between the driver and his seat or anything else. I just exposed the ones that I basically cut away by cutting this away from its supports, which is basically the ground. I have to include body forces no matter what, but the internal forces, realize these internal forces are equal and opposite. And we'll talk about those more in the next slide. All right, same overall body, asking a different question this time. This time, find the components of reactions at C and D. Now, if we're going to find those reactions, we need to expose them. We need to essentially cut apart this crane, and so we expose these forces inside here. You can think of these internal forces kind of like um, blood coursing through your veins, that if you don't cut it open, right, we don't cut this apart at that joint, then that joint doesn't bleed. You can think of it that way. So basically those forces then are not exposed. And so, so for this iteration of the problem, we'll have one free body diagram of the boom. So there would be my boom free body diagram. And then another free body diagram of the crane without the boom. And so that would look something roughly, right? My blob free body diagram, something like this. So now here's the boom, here's the crane overall. And now on these two free body diagrams, we then can add the forces. Um, so we have this weight force here. Earlier we called this W1, we'll stick with that. We also had the body force here, weight number two, sticking with that one. We still have these normal forces down here at coming from the ground, call this one an A call this one over here and B. Those still exist because we've isolated this body away from that lower surface. Now let's get to these contact forces here between C and D. Uh, the first thing we can notice here is that we have a, a dual pinned member, pinned at D, pinned at E, no weight mentioned for DE. Therefore, we can assume that that's a two force member. And so I can have a force coming up here. We F of D, E, and then we have a pin here at C. Now this is a multi-force member, which is the crane, also a multi-force member, which is this arm. So the pin here at C, we're gonna assume has both a vertical component, call that CY, and down here, call this one CX. And then we'd have these two forces basically at that pin. Now these are the forces of the lower body of the crane on this arm, and then equal and opposite to that, we have here is the same CY, and then the same CX, and that CY and CX you'll notice are equal and opposite of the pin forces up here, okay? And so these forces down here are the forces of the arm on this lower portion of the crane. The last force we need to add in here is our um, lower part of the two force member here, also equal to FDE. And so this would be our multi-body free body diagram if we wanted to solve for those forces at uh, at C and D. And then if we additionally wanted to solve for them um, down here at point B, excuse me, at point B and point A. So this is the kind of problem we get into. We call this a frame and machine problem where we have multi-body free body diagrams. This is not the type of problem that we ask early in statics, basically in chapter five of our textbook, when we're simply dealing with, with single body free body diagrams. Another thing that I've been seeing lately is students adding ghost moments um, to their free body diagrams. Now, what I mean by ghost moments are basically students are, are doing a great job of thinking about that there's going to be forces that will be causing moments about certain points on their free body diagram. Um, but that's basically in the computational stage. We don't need to include those in our free body diagram stage. So if we add the body here, and so this one's going to be pretty simple, right down here is point A, uh, about here is going to be point B. And so there is our body. We then getting into adding our forces. Of course, we add all of our um, given couples. There's a couple on the end that 800 Newton meters. There's going to be a vertical only force coming from the rocker there at B. So we call this force here N sub 
B. Then down here at A, of course, we have pin forces. This would be my A, Y. Horizontal force here, this would be my A sub X because we have two forces basically coming from this pin. Now, noting that this pin here in the middle at point B, it's basically this normal force is the normal force coming off of the surface through this rocker and then they're into that pin. And so while pins, if they're hooked to a fixed surface, right? So the difference between these two is down here, the pin at A is rigidly attached to a surface, whereas the pin at B is hooked to this little rocker. The rocker does not support any forces left and right. Uh, the last force I need to add in here, of course, would be my um, given 500 Newton force. And so here would be that uh, 500 Newton force for that couple. So this becomes my free body diagram. Now what I see happening at times from students is they want to add in, I like the, I'll add these in in a pink, they'll start thinking about say this 500 Newton force and they'll think well if I sum my moments down here at point A as I get into my equilibrium equations then I know that I'm going to have a moment, an R cross F moment from this 500 Newton force. And the thinking is great but the thing you don't want to do with that thinking is basically come here into your free body diagram diagram and say, well, that will give me a moment here of 500 newtons times this 8.67 feet as I work through the geometry, something, you know, around 4,500 uh, newton meters. You don't add that to your free body diagram. Okay. You will deal with that as you compute the moment, say that you pick point A to compute the moment about, but these are the only couple moments and forces that are included on your free body diagram. Essentially to add this in, adds in a redundant term that you'd end up adding two different couples. One of those is concentrated rotational couple, the other one the R cross F with the 500, and you double the amount of moment that came um, from that 500 in force. And so we want to strip it back to just the applied and not any of those, as I call them, ghost moments, which you're thinking ahead in doing your computations. And so our free body diagram would look like this. The real bottom line on free body diagrams is that we don't want any more unknown forces on our free body diagrams. And now when I say forces, I probably should edit this to say we don't want any more unknown reactions because they can be both forces and moments. And so let me just cross that out and we'll put here, this would say reactions instead. And so taking a look here at the list, if we have a two-dimensional problem, a two-dimensional problem where we have point equilibrium, Okay, so which is basically particle equilibrium, equilibrium um, of a single point in space. Now this requires that all forces are concurrent through that single point. Uh, this came out of chapter three in our textbook. We know that we only have two equations for that. Our equations are some of the force in the X, some of the force in the Y. That's it. That's all we get. And so we can't have any more than two unknowns on our free body diagram. As we came into chapter five and had multi-force bodies, we ended up now with three equations and three unknowns. The most common equations, some of the force X, some of the force Y, and a sum of moment about some point. Those are the three equations, hence three unknowns. And so if you're making the mistakes that I've talked about above, quite often you'll end up with extra unknowns on your free body diagram. Fix those before you move into your equations. Coming up with creative math to try to solve for those extra unknowns is not acceptable. We need to have the correct free body diagram and move from there. As we get into three-dimensional equilibrium, there's both three-dimensional point equilibrium, which is also covered in chapter three. Three equations, three unknowns there. All of the force directions, X, Y, and Z. And then as we get into multi-force bodies, in a three-dimensional sense, we have six equations, some of the force X, Y, Z, some of the moment X, Y, Z, resulting in a total of six unknowns. So make sure to count your unknowns in your free body diagram before you move on. So in summary, here are the do's and don'ts. And so instead of talking about errors, here's the things to do and not to do. First of all, don't add weight when it's not mentioned. Do not add an extra weight term as an extra unknown. It likely will give you more unknowns than you can handle in the problem. Second up, do isolate the body which exposes the reactions asked for in the problem. Take a look at the problem statement and see basically what reactions it's asking for and make sure that you're isolating just the piece that answers that. 
That is closely related here to number four as we get down to that one. Number three, do remove the supports from your free body diagram. Once you add in the forces and or couples that come from a support, that's all that we need from that support. Basically, those represent fully the effect of that support. Leave the actual um, supports off of your free body diagram after you've included their effect. Uh, number four, do ignore internal forces unless they're exposed by isolating. Basically, if you don't cut something apart, don't expose an internal force. Uh, what happens there is the, the forces between bodies are equal opposite and they end up canceling out internally anyways. And so they don't have any net effect on the overall problem. Don't add ghost moments. It's good to think about what our cross F moment is, but don't add those terms additionally to your free body diagrams. And then finally, do check your equation number versus your unknown known number before starting your math. This is one of the key things after working through your free body diagram that really can ensure that you've got an appropriate one, at least with the numbers of unknowns uh, before you get into solving. Hope that helps you clarify some of these things on free body diagrams. I wish you all the best.